What's up, humans? Welcome to another episode of Shots from the Winchester podcast, brought to you by Greencastle Consulting, your nation's premier strategy execution firm. I'm your host, Al Green, and today we got an awesome episode. We have Joe Crandall, CEO and visionary of Greencastle, and we have Eric Diamond, president of Greencastle Consulting and Integrator. And we're gonna get into these titles uh, in a moment, but first of all, let's jump in and talk about who these guys are. Um, let's talk about Joe first. Like Joe, get, just give the audience just a brief about uh, who you are, where you came from, why you bought Greencastle. Yeah, uh, I grew up in a small town in Incline Village, Nevada, uh, joined the Navy. Uh, and then after that, uh, got into sales and marketing a little bit. Um, and then, when I joined Greencastle in 2012, uh, I was brought on to help grow the company. And uh, as time went on, uh, Selwyn Evans, the previous owner, wanted to uh, get out of it. And so uh, I was the the one that was stupid enough to, to put up the money to buy it. <laughs> and uh, five years later, here we are. Uh, we've yeah. grown over 500%, uh, over 115 people on board uh, in a 24,000 square foot facility with yeah. its own podcast room, <laughs> its own gym, its own golf simulator and a yeah. bar. Uh, and we do consult. That's a lot of fun. And then Eric? Yeah. So uh, born and raised in the great state of Pennsylvania, where we are today. I uh, got an Army ROTC scholarship um, to go to Bucknell University. That parlayed into becoming a Chinook driver, uh, Chinook helicopters. They're the ones with the two big rotors on top nice. instead of just the one. Yeah. Um, but that was for the National Guard. So kind of simultaneously, I started up a solar company, ran that for a few years, bounced around to another few things, and, and ultimately ended up here. So nice. uh, diverse early you know, professional work experience, and I think that helped me get well-rounded and ready to go into the consulting field. Nice, yeah. nice. Well, besides having fun things like golf simulators and stuff, we have a happy hour that we always post mm -hmm. um, at least once a, once a month. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a little bit of pregame happening in front of us right here of some whiskey some from uh, Liberty. So we're going to hit that real quick and jump into the conversation. Cheers. Ooh, that's Not awesome. <laughs> Not bad. Ooh, rye whiskey. That's great. All right. So let's just... A brief history about Greencastle. Sure. Like, how did Greencastle come about, and when did you purchase it? Yeah, so Greencastle uh, was founded in 97 uh, by three Army Rangers. And what they wanted to do is take the, the military decision-making model and, and use it in a way to help companies solve big problems. Mm -hmm. And so for many years, they operated uh, in different industries, working with different types of companies. They ultimately settled in on healthcare for a little while, and then mm -hmm. uh, energy, uh, where we're at right now in the utilities business. And, um, you know, I joined in 2012, uh, and then in 2015 is when I became a partner. And then in 2019 is when I purchased the company. Nice. nice. I think one of the interesting things to add there is, um, it was founded by three army Rangers, but it wasn't in its earlier years, exclusively a hundred percent staffed by mm. veterans. It was always the lion's share, but it wasn't exclusive. And as Joe was getting ready to take over the company, he and I were talking about, you know, wh what, are, what are we really trying to do in the long run? And, and as part of that, what makes us special? What makes us so effective? What is our secret sauce? Mm. And we kind of identified it. It is that military thing. It is that veteran experience, the camaraderie, the culture, the, the mindset of how we approach things. And so Joe really was the one that set the tone and said, hey, it's, it's always been mostly veteran. And we, we identified that's what makes us special. And that, that's what we're all about moving forward. So since he took over the company, it's been 100% uh, veteran staffed. Nice. Yeah, we like to say we're the world's largest veteran-only company. Yeah. Why, why do you find it important that it's all veterans? Veterans have a way of getting stuff done. Yeah. And um, they, don't, they don't necessarily worry about the fanfare or uh, they don't get wrapped up around small little details that might not be uh you know available or be to you know something that can be solved easily they just move on and keep executing the mission so yeah. our clients like that that's why we created the gsd award uh the gsd framework uh and all the the different things that we have which is to, to allow the the veteran to just work for a client and get stuff done i think there, nice. there's things that you gain from military experience and it's a, it's a combination of both hard and soft skills right yeah the soft skills is, is that mindset aspect. It's I'm just not going to lose. I'm just not going to give up. Mm -hmm. And in particular, it's there's a stress inoculation too. You get you get trained to operate at a high level when there's bullets flying around your head. Yeah, true. Right. Yeah. You get into the corporate world. You know there there can be some stressful situations, but 
usually there's no bullets flying around. Nobody's going right, to die. Right. <laughs> so the soft skill side is a, is a huge asset to what we bring to the table. But the hard skill side as well, Joe mentioned early on, is there's a there's a military decision making process. There's there's actually technical elements to leadership, mm. right, into planning and to executing that we we learn in a pragmatic way in the military that you can bring as well. Nice, yeah. nice. Now you mentioned earlier about growth being over 500 percent and this is inside of the last five years that obviously is there's a plan there and uh, with growth at 500 percent, that's pretty epic like uh what's the plan what what's what was the motivation that drove that 500 percent? yeah a lot of that was uh just pent-up demand for our work uh mm -hmm. through the the good work that our consultants were doing yeah uh, for years and years uh, we've just been executing with companies like Exelon and PPL and a few others. And it's uh, when the Gackers, our employees, were uh, just doing a great job, there was always asks for more and more. And we just mm. never really capitalized on that. Mm. And uh, so when I purchased the company, I decided to to let that animal loose. And uh, we've been, uh, you know, growing rapidly since. I think when we when I bought it, it was, what, 30, 30 people? And mm. now we're at 115. That's and... You know, we just hired our first salesperson. So yeah. like, now, now we got to get serious about uh, the growth and yeah. uh, start expanding outside our, our current clients as well as outside uh, Philadelphia. Nice. A lot of that, so Joe mentioned pent up growth, right? Yeah. Some of that was internally uh, restricted. We, we kind of intentionally, before Joe took over, encouraged people to come here for a few years and move on. Joe started to yeah, create- The way station. Mm. Just started to create career growth opportunities so that consultants could stay on longer. And that that really had this virtuous circle of our model and, and how, because consulting is a broad industry, but our model really is this deep uh, client relationship, client intimate model, mm. where we, we don't just treat them as a job to get in and get out and, and make a quick buck, right? We really get invested into learning everything that is about them, what drives them, and, and their broader corporate culture, their systems, their processes, their policies, right? So that there, there's such a wealth of knowledge and, and ability to continue to deliver more and more value for our clients mm. if you stick around. Like you, you gain all that on your first project that you do for them, yeah. you're twice as effective on the next one. You're three times mm. as effective on the next one. So before we would have people kind of go through that learning curve and then move on to another company. Yeah. Now they stick around and we just really are able to knock it out of the park with delivering value time and again and deeper and deeper value. Mm. And that's that's what's really kind of that, that pent up explosion that we saw. Nice, nice. And it looks like, so, what gives Greencastle that edge that the clients are really looking for? And I feel like you answered this, but just a little bit more nuance into that, if we could. A lot of it comes down to, in my opinion, that uh, we don't have three foot wall people, uh, mm. which is people that get yeah. stopped by small little obstacles. Uh, they blast right through them or they go around them or under them. Mm -hmm. uh, the other side, too, is, is that... Uh, we're, we're picking the best people with military background. So we just don't pick right out of the military, right fresh out. We pick people with um, uh, already consulting backgrounds or, uh, uh, you know, a long storied career in the civilian community and help them unleash the, the skill sets that they have. Mm -hmm. And uh, they enjoy accomplishing things. Yeah. And I think they're that's probably the key to it is that uh, most of our employees enjoy getting stuff done. They don't, yeah. they don't like to sit around and just uh, go with the flow. They like to, to forge their own path. They like to, to get things done so the client's successful and so then they can, they can enjoy that. Nice. Yeah. I think there's another military mindset uh, asset that we have, which is mm -hmm. veterans love to be part of a team. And so when we get assigned mm. uh, to a client where the client has a challenge or a project that they're, they're trying to work through, we don't just treat it as their problem that we're here to, to deliver some deliverables or services like we make it our problem. We take it yeah. on ourselves, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, in the beginning of every show, I always say strategy execution firm. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, good. I'm glad you do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for our audience, because- Actually, I have to take a shot every time you say strategy execution firm. <laughs> yeah, it's a new drinking game. <laughs> That's a good look. Um, uh, so what is strategy execution? Because I feel like um, if the audience doesn't know what that is, you you two are the best people to answer that for them. Yeah. So- Strategy execution is, in my opinion, uh, it could be everything from a single contributor uh, being part of a larger project or us running the entire project. And what generally ends up happening is, is a, a large consulting firm, uh, somebody with the breadth and depth to be able to set the strategy for a Fortune 500 company mm. comes in and says, here's your, here's this, what your strategy should be for the next couple of years. Yeah. And 
what they don't do so well is they don't uh, they don't have a lot of people that can execute that and get stuff done. And so mm. uh, that's when we come into the the picture where uh, VP or uh, senior director has handed this plan and said, do it. Mm. And they're just like, okay. And then that's where we come in. Yeah. We have uh, methodologies that are built on change management, process improvement, and project management, sprinkling some uh, business intelligence and uh, some other stuff in there. Mm-hmm. And we have a, a combined methodology uh, that it allows us to really take any sort of uh, major initiative that's critical to the organization and begin to execute on it and have quick wins as well as long-term schedules and uh, long-term milestones for success. And so nice. um, that's that's really the, the crux of a lot of what people are doing right now through digital transformations or you know, wholesale swap outs of uh, software systems or creating a new uh, service line for their company, uh, we can come in and help them with any of those things. Uh, I think it's worth mentioning that we didn't always refer to our services as strategy execution. So, right, right, yeah. And mm-hmm. we used to refer to it for, for what it is, which is mm-hmm. implementation, right? But implementation is a word that's about as specific as consulting. Right. Now you say, oh, I do consulting. Like, yeah. Okay, we do implementation. <laughs> I, I, I kind of understand-ish what that word means. Right. Like, so just the more descriptive way to say what we're doing, right? Mm. Our, our clients, the leadership there, the C-suite, the CEO themselves, the board directors, whoever it is, they have a strategy. They might have thought of it themselves. They might have paid some you know big four, Bain, BCG, McKinsey type to help them with that. Either way, right. they have a fairly clear vision of what they want to get done over a period of time. Yeah. And they just don't have uh, the ability to clone themselves 50 times or a team of people on staff, on standby, just hoping and waiting for a strategy to get given to them, right? Right. They need the bandwidth and they need the bandwidth of people who have the mindset and skill set to follow that through as opposed mm-hmm. to typically they're staffed with operations people who are experts on what they do, Yeah. right? Strategy implementation is often doing something that, that a company doesn't do day to day, right? right? That's what makes it a strategy, right? This is how are they evolving in the market? And that's, that's what we specialize in delivering. Nice, nice. Yeah. Now, I feel like that covered, um, you know, why did we decide to use the term strategy execution? Yeah, Pretty it's more widely, widely accepted and understood. Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially uh, if we're looking for people uh, to recognize who we are as Greencastle, using something that's not overly saturated might be actually a little easier for us to mm-hmm. like get vis- more visibility, mm-hmm. yeah, which is a good look too. Let's define these roles. Now, earlier before when we started, we said, um, you know, CEO, and president, but you guys are also visionary and integrator. So uh, this is based on the EOS model. Right. Um, and I think the audience was really keened in on like the whole EOS, EOS model and like, what does that mean and how does Greek Castle use it? So could you just tell everybody like how you guys sort your roles? Yeah, so it actually started back in 2019 when I purchased the company. We we read this book, Traction, <clears throat> uh, by Gino Wickman, I think it was. And it just made sense the way it, it just provides a framework and and how to run a, a growing company. Mm-hmm. And we implemented it ourselves. And uh, there were certain things we just didn't do right away, um, just didn't make sense or wasn't the right time for us. And the visionary and integrator model was one of those things. So we pushed it off for a couple of years and... Over time, we just started to naturally settle into those roles. And really, the visionary is like the long-term strategy, uh, big picture ideas, uh, you know, trying to set the vision where the company's going. And then uh, the integrator is like the day-to-day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Eric, you know, essentially summed it up as, I make the rules, he executes them, mm-hmm. right? And so uh, that's where we've decided to settle in on. So earlier this year, we took the SLT up to uh, a retreat, had uh, somebody help us facilitate it. And so far, so good. I mean, we've been doing it for, what, a few months now? Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Eric's enjoying it immensely. Um, <laughs> and I am too, since I'm not doing a lot of the day-to-day stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's uh, we're, we're settling into our roles. Internally, we're visionary and integrator. Mm-hmm. Externally, CEO, president. Yeah, yeah. And how do you feel like that 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 feels looking outward, like as, as far as people looking inward? Seeing that you guys are a visionary, seeing that you're an integrator, um, what, are the, what, are, what do you feel the optics are on that? I think it's great because it allows uh, – the company needs both. Yeah. E- really, every company yeah, does, does need both. Mm. Um, but it really has let us settle into our, our you know, unique values and ability to deliver. You know, I'm a, I'm a very numbers, metrics-based, logic-based, you know, no, systems-based really? guy. <laughs> yeah. And, and I that, know that. <laughs> that. You know, less so – 
you know, able to conceive of things that don't exist yet, where right. where Joe can kind of what if things and look at those make shit up. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, I'm the good idea fairy, and yeah. he's the good idea sniper. Well, <laughs> well, it's a visionary. You know, you can like creating things. As, oh, I create things. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so Joe, Joe throws it against the wall, and I come in. And try to clean it, and, and some of it I can't get off. Some of it sticks. You know, he throws against the wall, and we see what sticks. Do I throw it often <laughs> enough. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, there's a few things too. Um, when we talk about veterans and things um, moving forward, uh, one of the things that's important is that Greencastle gives back a lot uh, to the community, also to the veteran community. Um, why does why is that important to Greencastle? Yeah, that's a it's a good question. Uh, one, we're all 100 percent veterans, so. Mm. Uh, we want to support the organizations that uh, the Gackers, our employees, want to support. Um, plus, there are certain programs out there that uh, we want to get involved with. Uh, I mean, last year we we supported uh, an around the world sailing race uh, because they support oh, yeah. uh, veterans' uh, mental health illness through mm -hmm. sailing therapy. And the year before, the last couple of years, we've supported uh, the National Center for Healthy Veterans down in Virginia, and mm -hmm. uh, we've done a few other large scale ones. Uh, overall, I think we give uh, probably. One hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars a year back to the veteran community. Nice. Um, some local, uh, like uh, Team Foster uh, for the Rough Ride, Patriot Fund, and a few others. Um, but the reason why we do that is because I think we're in a position uh, where we're we're doing well, and uh, I'm not about. I, I don't enjoy giving mon money <clears throat> to individuals. I enjoy giving it to the organization so they can help the individuals because they're better yeah. suited to do it. Yeah. Uh, as much as I think I could help homeless veterans mm -hmm. individually I'm it's much better to get my money to BMC and yeah. let Joe Brooks and his team go and, and help homeless veterans yeah so that's why that's awesome. why we give out a lot I, I think just conceptually if I could add a hot take to that like the, the military you know provides one really critical service and benefit overall right the, the national defense supporting our, our freedom and our way of life right but there's byproducts of it as well the outputs and, and the for the most part, that's veterans. Yeah, you know, there, there's the actual act of service and, and what we get as a country from that, but it, it also outputs veterans. And Greencastle, as an organization, wildly benefits mm -hmm. from the fact that the military outputs veterans some of the most dynamic, capable, motivated problem solvers that we can put forward into the corporate world and, and solve big problems, right? Yeah. But uh, the unfortunate side is the military also puts out um, issues, problems, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether whether it's mental health or, or physical disability or you name it, right? Mm -hmm. There there is a, a sadder side to the the outcome of some military service. And so if we're here yeah. as the beneficiary mm -hmm. of what the military is doing for us, I think it's important that we get to take some of that and give back and, and help out with some of the the less desirable effects of the military. Wow. Yeah. And then on the spot. Yeah, yeah. On this podcast, too, we talk a lot about PTSD, mental mm -hmm. health. Mm -hmm. um, these are things that veterans are dealing with on a, on a regular basis. And uh, something that uh, I like as a platform is myself. So I thank you guys for, you know, having this platform available for that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of people talk about that. And a lot of people um, are listening to this podcast, recognizing that we are veteran owned and operated. Um, and then that's a good uh, niche to be in, you know, especially. So what is the future of Greencastle? That's my job as a visionary. <laughs> I'm going uh, to take five. I want to take five. <laughs> yeah, th that, that way Eric can't say no. Um, no, I think we're pretty well aligned on our overall strategy, which is to be uh, the nation's strategy execution firm for Fortune 500 clients. Yeah. And so does that mean that we're that today? No. That means that we're, that's our aspiration. That's where we're moving towards. Mm. And so all the things we're doing now are setting us up for the ability to do that down the road. So um where we plan to be i think uh you know uh, in 2030 we're hoping to have 500 consultants uh doing projects across the nation all still 100 100 veteran nice. and uh with you know significant presence within the utility industry and telecom and life sciences and others but those are kind of our three right now mm -hmm. um the thing about it is is you don't really know right mm -hmm. um because uh it's we have a plan. We have made some cert certain decisions to do certain things. And it's kind of like poker. There's so many things out of your control that, you know, you get two aces in your hand and then the flop comes and it's three threes and that guy has a three and now you're mm. beat, you know. So it's like, um, you know, so it's it's really a guessing game in a lot of ways and making educated uh, specific uh, choices to hopefully take advantage of uh, where the, the company is. Mm. 
Uh, I do know that we're going to continue to grow. I do know that uh, we're going to continue to do strategy execution and those kind of things. Um, but a lot of it is really, uh, you know, once it comes down to the the day to day and how we react to certain things, you know, he'll be, mm -hmm. you know, taking care of some of that. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think just overall we have a, we have got a handful of, of client fanatics now that we've we've yeah. proven that our core business model works and now it's it's scaling that up and, and taking on new clients and solving new problems, forging new relationships and critically along the way identifying our up and coming leaders and, and making sure that they're ready to take the reins. It's a great opportunity as a CEO, as president, to put a little bit out about your experience as a leader. Yeah, so I think Eric touched on it, which is extremely important is I, as much as we do consulting and all the other things that we do, uh, I think I look at us as a leadership factory. Yeah. We have to produce uh, people that will take the reins and, and continue to, to grow the company mm -hmm. once, you know, Eric and I are gone, which, you know, hopefully is not for anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But it's that's what we have to do is help create other leaders. And there's to me, there's no bigger compliment than somebody that grows up through Greencastle. And it's like, you know what, I'm going to go start my own company. I'm going to mm -hmm. go do this. I'm going to and, and do bigger and better things than maybe they could do here because they have the skills that they got here. Yeah. And so that's that's the first thing. And then, you know, if you're looking for like a leadership philosophy or anything from me, it's, you know, I, I'm a big stoic fan, um, you know, so I don't let I try not to let things bother me. Um, but, uh, you know, the one thing I did learn in SEAL training is don't let uh, don't confuse effort with performance. Mm. Outcomes matter. That's good. I like that. And last but not least, let's talk about this jacket. <laughs> I love this jacket. So it's by the company called the Jacket Club. It's, yeah. it's from a Naval Academy guy. Yeah. And uh, this is the material they make our bedspreads out of at the Naval Academy. Yeah. And so for four years, you don't sleep in your sheets. You sleep on top of your bed. Yeah. Uh, and this is called a blue magnet. And mm. so... Uh, Every time somebody would take a nap, they'd end up with the marks on their face. So you knew that they were sleeping on top of their blue magnet. Yeah. And if, if you guys are interested, it's the jacket club. They got other ones, though. This is, I like this. One. I like this. It's got the goat on here. Yeah. <laughs> I want to take this off and put the naval, uh, put the uh, Green Castle logo on there. But it's <laughs> really cool. You know. Yeah, well, thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much for your information. This has like been great. Um, honestly, I think we should do this at least once a quarter if we can. Sure. You know, something that we can like just drop something Sounds for, great. for the gang or something like that. Or if you have something you just want to put out, you know, I think this would be a great opportunity and a great format to be able to do that. I think that'd be a good look. We love to hear ourselves Sounds talk. <laughs> you do. I don't. <laughs> on behalf of Greencastle, your nation's premier strategy execution firm, I'm your host, Al Green, Joe Crandall. Eric Diamond, and we'll see you in the next episode.